Hi, if you're in the market for a cordless vacuum cleaner and you're looking to spend around 250 to 300 pounds, then no doubt you will have come across these two. We've got the Dyson V7 and the Shark IZ201. And what we get asked a lot in our showroom is what's the differences between the two. So what I've done is I've come up with quite a few comparisons between the two vacuum cleaners and just really, I, I just really want to show you some of the differences between the two. Now first of all, all I'd normally say just before we start is please subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, click, give us a quick thumbs up. I normally talk about things like cordless vacuum cleaners like these guys and household appliances and small domestic appliances as well. So it just gives a thumbs up and then we'll carry on. As a lot of you will be aware that there are quite a few other models within the ranges and what I mean by that is that this model is the V7 Animal Plus. Uh, so there are quite a few other models around this. Uh, there's the normal Animal, so the V7 Animal, there's a V7 Absolute. Uh, the main difference between them is the number of tools that they come with. And with the IZ201 there is another version, so this is the UK version. Uh, there is another version called the UKT and the main difference is that that one comes with a turbo brush. But really what I've tried to do is I've tried to pick the two models, so these are in the top five of the most popular cordless vacuum cleaners sold in the UK and also they're at the same price as we speak. So at the moment both of these retail for £250. So I just thought it's a fair comparison uh, rather than choosing ones that have got the same tools. Um, also what we find is this, for, for our company and I think for a lot of companies, uh, clearly by the, the ratings that these sell at, this is really where the market is. Uh, I do know that uh, a lot of the higher end products, things like the V10, V11 do sell and they do sell in some good numbers, uh, but this is really where the, the mass market is and it's a really good compromise between not being too expensive, you're not going to the realms of five, six, seven hundred pounds. Uh, so it's not been too expensive, but also performance is great on both of these. So let's start having a look. So the first thing to look at, and I suppose really it is one of the most important things to consider, is the runtime of the vacuum. Now this is the maximum amount of time that you can vacuum on the minimum suction. And what I mean by the minimum suction is that both vacuums have got different power options. Um, I suppose most of the time people will tend to use the minimum suction if you're on say a hard floor or tiled floor. Um, as soon as you get to a carpet or if you've got an area that really needs a good suction then that's where you can move on to the maximum suction and, and that can really make a difference on how much is picked up. So on the Dyson you look at a maximum 30 minute run time. Uh, what you have got is you have got an option for a lower setting. So you can hear how it varies between the maximum and the minimum and as I say 30 minute runtime so for a lot of people that isn't actually too bad uh, more people I suppose when you when it comes to vacuuming I suppose a lot of people are vacuuming small and often uh, whereas at, I would say a lot of the the older generation tend to have probably a certain day where you go and do your vacuuming I might be wrong if I'm wrong pop it in the comment below um, but what I will find is that people like my parents, my nan, uh, she still has a certain day of the week that she'll go and do a vacuum in. Whereas at home we tend to do it a little bit, I suppose a bit more often, uh, but we'll perhaps do a room or a couple of rooms. And that's just the way I personally I think that generations have changed a bit. And as we go to the shark, then this one has a maximum run time of up to 40 minutes. And I always say up to 40 minutes or up to 30 minutes. Uh, because clearly if you are going to use uh, some of the tools and accessories or the main floor head then that can reduce the runtime and especially if you're going to use it on the higher suction as well then that will have a big impact on the amount of runtime that you'll get. So on the Shark then it's slightly different uh, whereas with on the Dyson I will just show you that it has got the trigger on it so on this one you've got the trigger and that's how you switch it on and that's the only option you've got so you don't have an option for a switch or anything um, some people uh, to be fair a lot of people like that and what Dyson will say is that by having the trigger based system then you will get a longer run time because if you've got an area that doesn't quite need doing then you take your finger off uh, whereas if you're 
Uh, if, for example, if, if you had a switch on there, then you'd still have it running, and in other words, you won't get quite so long runtime. And in practice, that, that is true. Uh, but with Shark, they've done things slightly differently. So on here, you've got a switch to turn it on and off. And what that does is that will vary uh, the floor head and that will vary the speed of the floor head when you've actually got it connected up. But what you've also got is you've got a little switch here. So you've got this, it's like a little trigger, uh, but what you can do, and as it says here, pull for max power. And I suppose what Shark have done is they've come up with this design and personally, I really like it. Um, what you'll find is that if you've got a certain area that really needs a good clean, then you just pull your finger for perhaps a couple of seconds, uh, just while you're cleaning that area, and then it reduces back to the normal suction. And that way, there is a good chance that you could get near to the 40 minute runtime. So I'll just show you that. So first of all, you switch it on. The next thing to look at is the bin capacity. And what I mean by that is the amount of rubbish or dirt that you can get inside the bin before you have to empty it. There's nothing more frustrating when you're doing the vacuuming. Uh, if you find you have got quite a dirty floor where you have to keep emptying the bin, what you'll find is that the suction will reduce a lot so it won't pick up at all, uh, or won't pick up as well as it should do uh, when the bin's full or needs emptying. And on the Dyson here, so you have got a maximum line, so that's where it's recommended. That, so on the Dyson, that's where they recommend that you empty it. Uh, on this one, you've got the capacity of 0.54 litres. And as you go over to the Shark, then you're going up to 0.7 litres. So you have got quite a bigger capacity on the Shark. So although the capacity on the Shark is bigger, um, I suppose really just to comment that because you've got a bigger bin, then overall the vacuum will be a little bit bigger as well to cope with the extra capacity. And what I want to do now is to show you how easy they are to empty um, and also to take the filters out. So on the Shark here, if you want to empty it, then you just press the button, uh, hold that, clearly hold it over a bin. You don't want to do it in the middle of your room, uh, like I have done before. I've emptied a whole container in a showroom in front of someone. Um, so when it comes to emptying it, then do it in a well ventilated area. I always recommend try and do it outside. Um, what you can find is if you do it in, your, in, in an inside bin, then you can still get the dust and rubbish coming up at you. So to just empty the bin is really easy on the Shark. And then on the Dyson, it is as easy. All you do is you just do that. So clearly I've just emptied some rubbish onto the floor here. So we'll need to vacuum that up in a minute. Um, so I'll just show you that again. So on here, so you've got the red handle on the top and you just pull that. And the act of doing that, it releases the, the lid. So all the rubbish comes out. And also what it does is you've actually got, and you can't really see it in here, but you have got some uh, like rubber parts inside the bin. And what it will do is it will try and help to clean this inner shroud as well. So it's, it's doing a couple of jobs rather than just emptying the bin itself. So that's quite a good design. So once you've emptied the bin, then at certain points you are going to want to clean and maintain the vacuum. Now, I won't go into all the cleaning details. Uh, I have, uh, on some of the models, on the Dyson V7, I have actually done a full cleaning video. I'll just post the link here if you wanted to watch me do that. Uh, it, it is quite an in-depth process. Uh, I do strip quite a lot of it down, and I suppose show you how to clean it properly. Uh, but for regular sort of day-to-day -day maintenance, then on this model, you've actually got two filters. You've got the main filter on the top here. Uh, so that one is washable and you've got the other one just on the back. So it just twists and then comes off. So dead easy, both of them are washable. Uh, both of them are easily replaceable. And let's go to the Shark, then on this one, you actually have to take the bin off to get to the filters. So you just press the button on the side and just put that to the side there. And you've got one filter on the top here. You've got a cheeky little tag on the top here and you've got a couple of filters. So again, both of those are washable. And 
then you've got another one just within the main part of the unit and that one there so again you can you can wash both of these uh, with any of the filters whether it's the Dyson or the Sharp what I would recommend and I'd say is mandatory once you've washed any of the filters then leave them for 24 hours to dry what you don't want to do is wash it leave it for an hour or so um, think it's dry then put it back in the vacuum because chances are it's still got some residual moisture within the filter and there is a good chance that you could damage it and that won't be covered by the warranty of the vacuum manufacturers so just make sure it's completely dry if you're not too sure about that then buy a spare set of filters they're not too expensive and the advantage of having a spare set of filters is that when you take this set out give them a wash you can put them on the side to dry completely and you can put the other set of filters in and you can start vacuuming straight away so that's something i'd always recommend and then when it comes to putting the bin back on then you just locate it at the bottom there and then it clips back on so it is a good design uh, i'd say as far as the filtration it's not quite as easy as the dyson because you've got access from the outside whereas on the shark you have to take the bin off to access the main filters now for some people when you're buying a cordless vacuum then things like runtime, bin capacity is not the highest on your priority list. The weight of the vacuum is. Now, again, it's something I do point out to people. I, in our showroom, I always get people to, to try the vacuums to make sure they're comfortable using it. And what you'll find is that the weight of the vacuum can be a really, really important factor, especially if you suffer with your hands. So as you go to the Dyson, then Dyson will quote that this is 2.3 kilograms for the main vacuum, so including the head as well, and it's 4.4 kilograms for the shark. So I, I do know it, you know, it does look bulkier, it does look bigger, and to be fair, it is a bit heavier as well. So 4.4 against 2.3, so there is quite a weight difference between the two. Uh, but what I wanted to do was just to weigh just the handheld units. So if you were just using it as a handheld, uh, say with a crevice tool on, then what I want to do is just to weigh it. So let's do that now, just to see what the difference is. So as you can see here, I've put the crevice tool on and on the Dyson, we're looking at 1,484 grams. Or if you work in pounds and ounces, then about three pounds, four ounces. And then as we go over to the shark, let's just go back so again just show you I've got the crevice tool on the shark and we're looking at so almost 1800 grams so there's quite a difference there or if you're in pounds and ounces then just under four pounds so as you can see the Dyson is quite a bit lighter and for some people as I said earlier that could be the deciding factor on which model to go for so I just briefly mentioned about the crevice tool uh, that both the models come with and I'll just show you those again. So that's the Dyson one, and that's the Shark one. Uh, not really a lot to compare between the two. So but as I've talked about the crevice tools, I thought I'd show you the tools and accessories that both models come with. So apart from the crevice tools, uh, this is the Shark. You've got a, a brush on here, so this is quite a, a stiff bristle brush. That, that's quite a good one, so if you've got things like uh, I, I normally use the example of a dried muddy footprint if the kids have come in the house with uh, say a muddy boot left it on the carpet and it's dried then that's a really good one to, to get into the carpet to get that out uh, so that's included with the shark uh, and Dyson have got that as well so again it's a, a similar similar concept I suppose if anything the shark one is slightly bigger uh, whether that makes a difference or not, I'm not, not too sure. Uh, also you've got this, so you've got the upholstery tool. This is for the shark again. Uh, so that's a, that's a popular one that people do like. And with Dyson, again you've got a similar one. So just show you that. So again, it's slightly smaller, smaller head. Uh, if anything, having a, a slightly wider head can be an advantage. It just means you're not having to vacuum for so long so again just going back to the runtime that could save you time if you've got a slightly wider head that's covering a larger surface area uh, but on this one this is called a combination tool that Dyson have this doubles up as a softer brush as well so if you if you're in a kitchen 
then if you're going around the hob, for example, then that can be a good one to use. Uh, so for the Sharp, then that is mainly it. With the Dyson, then you do get this one. This is, a, again, a softer bristle brush. Uh, and you also get the mini turbo brush with the Dyson. Now, I did mention earlier that there are other models in the Shark. Well, both models, they do have different variants. Uh, but for the Shark, there is another model called the IZ201 UKT, and that does include the turbo brush. Normally, that is a bit more expensive. So I was comparing these two because at the moment, they are the same price. But with the Dyson, that is included, the turbo brush. And it's something I really like. Uh, if you're going to vacuum your car or your stairs, then that can be a really good one to go for, especially if you've got carpets. It really gets into the pile of the carpet and can make a huge difference when you're using it as a handheld. As far as cleaning these, they're, they are easy to do. All you need to do is just pop a, a coin in the side and that just twists and then you can take the brush out to get any of the hair or any bits that you've got on there. The other thing that the Dyson does include is this. This is a reach under tool and what this will do I'll just try and show you on on the vacuum itself so it's normally used when you've got the main wand attached but I'll just show you on here it's a bit easier so what you can do is you can actually you can use it as the normal vacuum like that but when you press the switch here you can actually angle it so that if you want to get uh, say under a bed uh, or under a sofa where to save having to bend right down then you've got that option and that's something that is included with the Dyson um, it's something they've they used to do on a tool called the up top tool and what that was designed to do was to clean on top of your cupboards to be fair it didn't I suppose it's the sort of thing that nobody really asked for uh, so they've almost done the opposite with it they've gone underneath and I must admit people do really like this now I'm not going to let Dyson have all the glory when it comes to the extra tools and accessories because what Shark have done is they have got something similar uh, it's actually on the wand itself so all you do is you press the button on the back and that will angle like that so it is a similar concept and I must say this kind of design does go down really well with customers so when it comes to the main floor heads these are the two that they come with and what you'll find is that the the size of them are actually the same the actual external size uh, but the the actual roller brush itself so on the Dyson is about 22 centimeters and it's only 20 centimeters on the Shark and the reason I mention that because I did mention about the surface area uh, when you're actually cleaning earlier on one of the tools so on the Dyson then that could be a slight advantage uh, but what you'll find is that both manufacturers offer their own technologies when it comes to the the floor head so on the Dyson then you have got the, I mean this is what they call the direct drive head and you've got slightly stiffer bristles which are the red ones and then the black ones are softer bristles and that's a really good combination uh, for things like carpets and hard floors on one of the other models uh, the absolute model it does come with a fluffy head uh, you've probably seen advertised where they're picking up bits of cereal or larger particles so if your kids often spill cereal uh, or if they're larger particles then personally I'd recommend looking at the absolute model because that has the the fluffy head as part of it um, but on this one so what Shark do is they have something called anti hair wrap technology now this is something that is quite unique and it's I, I'm, Shark have been doing this for several years now uh, but not many manufacturers have uh, gone along this route the main advantage well it's as it says on the tin it's anti hair wrap it means that you don't get hairs wrapped around the main brushes and I have tried it quite a few times and it does work you've actually got two rollers on here so you've got the softer bristle roller at the front and then you've got the main head inside here and what you'll find is that on this main floor head especially then this is designed with the way it's all with the way it's all designed then you don't get the hair wrapped around it you have got the option if you want to to take it apart to clean it uh, although you don't get hair around it then at some point you want, might want to either replace it or to clean it uh, and all you do is you just use a coin uh, to to remove this plate you have got the option to remove the front brush here all you do is you just press that and then that comes off like that 
and then when you finish cleaning it then you just pop that back on that just clips back into place so that's nice and easy to do so i suppose all i'd say is if you have got hairy family members or if you have got animals or pets that molt um, if they lie in a certain area and if they leave clumps of hair then certainly consider the uh, the shark because you've got the anti-hair wrap technology so clearly at some point with both vacuums uh, being a cordless item you're going to need to charge it up and both brands have gone in completely different directions so with the dyson it does come with the wall bracket this is the the wall bracket that it comes with and when it's on the wall you just go and you locate it in there and it sits on there like that and what you can do is you can actually sit the the charger um, through here through the back uh, you'll see just around the back here you've got the the channel here um, the idea is that when you put it on the wall bracket hopefully you've put it near to a socket when you've wall mounted it and then when it's on the wall bracket it's charging and the main advantage of this kind of design is that when you go and put it away it's charging so it means that every time you go and get it it is fully charged um, it's a system that Dyson have used for years now and to be fair it does work but what Shark have done is they've come up with a completely different idea so what Shark have done is they've not really come up with the wall bracket idea I suppose what they're thinking is that they want to allow a bit more flexibility when it comes to charging the vacuum so you have got a couple of options first of all you can take the battery off so all you do is you just press and take the battery off like that so you've just got the two buttons you've got one button either side press those in and then what will happen is the battery will come off to be fair you can take the Dyson battery off so you just unscrew it and you can take it off and if you need to replace it then it is easy to do uh, it's not that it's a fixed battery at all uh, but with the shark it's probably a little bit easier to take off so what you can do is you can actually pop the charger into the end there um, so whether it's on a desk or in a utility room then you've got a bit more flexibility but but what shark have done is they've come up with this idea that what they want to try and do is to make it a bit more flexible as to where you keep the vacuum clearly with the Dyson if you're going to wall mount it then you are limited to a certain position in the house uh, and clearly that position has to be near to a main socket if you want to charge it at the same time and for some people they might not want to wall mount it uh, but again with the shark what you can do is you press the button here and that will uh, swizzle it down so it really reduces the height of the whole of the vacuum and what that's done now is that's really made a huge difference as to the size of the vacuum so it just gives you a bit more flexibility uh, if you had a, a small cupboard that you wanted to pop it in um, and also when it comes to charging it because you've not got the wall bracket idea then it just gives you a bit more flexibility because all you do is you've got the the batteries on the end here so you put it near to a charger and then plug it in and just wait for it to charge so something else to compare between the two is the warranty the, the manufacturer's warranty on the Dyson is two years and at the moment on the Shark it's five years now not many manufacturers especially around this price range are willing to put a five-year guarantee on a cordless product like this so I suppose the whole aim of this video was to show you the differences between the two now I suppose a lot of you will be saying well which one is the best the actual suction and the pickup ability on both of them are very good unfortunately I've not got any demonstrations today to show you um, but as far as which one to go for then it really depends on your needs um, as far as the shark I'd say on paper the shark looks better as far as the specifications uh, first of all you've got the five-year guarantee against a two-year guarantee uh, you've got the bigger bin capacity and the, the run time is longer so you've got 40 minutes against 30 minutes on the Dyson so on paper I'd say the the shark looks a bit better also if you have got hairy members of the family as I mentioned earlier or if you have got animals or pets then the anti hair wrap technology could be something to look out for but for some people you'll find that you haven't got animals uh, also weight of the vacuum is a priority in which case the Dyson will be the one to look for because it is quite a bit lighter than the shark I can feel it just standing here with the two hair um, so what you'll find is that for some people the Dyson will be the ideal one because the runtime for some people is not the highest priority especially if you're going to vacuum say, say if you're going to vacuum a, a room a day for example 
then something like the runtime of the vacuum isn't the highest priority. Also, I quite like the option of cleaning the filters. It's just a little bit easier on the Dyson. Uh, but both vacuums we keep selling out of. We struggle to get the stock. So both of them are really, really good vacuums. And I couldn't say that one is better than the other. It really depends on your needs. So if weight is a priority, then you go for the Dyson. If runtime and if bin capacity is your priority, then you're leaning towards the Shark. So I hope you found this useful, the comparisons between the Dyson V7 and the Shark IZ201. Please give us a thumbs up on a YouTube video. Click subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And leave any comments below. I'm sure there are things I've missed out between the two. Uh, I know some of you might have been expecting me to, to actually use the vacuums and compare the suctions on them. Uh, unfortunately, I haven't done that in this video. Uh, but leave any comments below. So anything you think that I should have done or talked about, then just pop it in the comments. Also, if you have got any questions on these, then again, just pop it in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you have got one of these two, and either if you like it or even if you don't like it, then again, pop it in the comments because I do always appreciate the feedback on any of the videos and the product I'm talking about. Anyway, thanks for watching.